My name is Kurt Buchanan, and in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to build a consequence model for a dam breach in Heck Life Sim using version 2.0 using the standard MMC operating procedures. I already have the data prepared that I need to build this model, including an actual Heck RAS model, a structure inventory, emergency planning zones that delineate the pre breach, post breach, and in pool zones, and a reach polygon that breaks the study area into downstream mileage ranges. I also have the breach initiation times that were provided by the RAS modeler. The first step is to create a new LifeSim study in your project directory. It's important to include a few things in the study name, like the name of the dam, what type of model it is, and what year it was built. If you just use the project name, people won't know whether it was a HECRAS model or an FIA model or a HEC Life Sim model or any other type of model. Now that our model is created, the next step is to import the hydraulic data. We right click on the hydraulic data and select import from HECRAS. We select the RAS model folder and click select folder. This will populate a drop down that we can use to pick our scenarios. Next we're going to hit import from map. This will allow us to select a hydrograph that we can use as a reference point so that all of our warning times will be relative to it. So we're going to zoom in on the dam. We're going to drag the slider bar to animate it so that we can see where we're going. And then we're going to pick an area between right before the first cross section downstream of the dam. Once the hydrograph appears, we click OK. Next step is to identify the actual imminent hazard time. So we're going to drag this red arrow pretty close to where we're going. Next we'll look at our CTS worksheet to see the actual breach time, which is 2015, which is 8.15 p.m. And we're going to change our time to correspond exactly with that. Next we click OK. This will import our hydraulic data. Notice how if we right click on the scenario we have the option to show cross section storage areas and we can also create max depth grids and max velocity grids. Next we'll import all the remaining scenarios in a similar manner. While the non-breach events do not have a breach time, we will use the same imminent hazard time as its corresponding breach event in order to make the warning times consistent. The next step is to import the structure inventory data. Right click on the structure inventory and select import structures from shapefile. Go find the structure inventory that you plan to import. It should be a point shapefile. Choose a name that makes the source data clear. We need to go through and select all the fields to map to our structure inventory. Several of the fields will be have defaults. The other value is also typically just zero. This is the, the correct field names to, 
to put into each of the import attribute drop downs. So we'll click next and go to the occupancy type assignments. This is so if you have different names, you can map them to the correct occupancy type in LifeSim. If you're using NSI version 2, they should populate automatically. Next we have the stability criteria. Each one of these should be linked to a certain attribute in the building type field. So for steel, we'll select building type equals S. For wood anchored, we'll say building type equals W and we'll remove this one. For masonry, use building type equals masonry, building type equals C for concrete, and then we'll remove the third field. For manufactured homes, we'll say building type equals H, which is the code for manufactured homes or mobile homes in the, uh, the HAZIS data. Note that you could also use the OCT type of RES2, which is a mobile home, and use that to also identify your building types. We'll make sure we have them all mapped. We have concrete, masonry, steel, wood, and H. So now we click finish. Now you can right click on the inventory to show it in the map window. And you can click on the map layers tab and you can right click and see the attribute table for your inventory. You can also click the arrow next to add data to add street map imagery or aerial imagery from streaming services. There are also several tools available including exporting the shape as a shape file, buffering, clipping, <clears throat> and selecting by polygons or in the attribute table you can select by attributes. So with these tools you can load in an inundation boundary shape file and you could help use that to help calibrate your inventory. In the next video segment We'll import the emergency planning zones and we'll set up alternatives and run a simulation for the model.